there folks, welcome back to the Houdini Firmograph tutorial series. Today we're going to be going over a simple destruction setup. One thing that's unique about the way we're going to do it is we're going to be creating this activation where it collapses from the top to the bottom and it adds this custom velocity as it goes. So let's just get into it. I'll be using this hand model which you can grab from the project files on our site but feel free to use just any piece of geo that you want. So I'm going to subdivide it first and then drop a poly fill node since this model has a hole at the bottom and I'm just going to set it to single polygon and then just give it normals. Now we're going to want to actually shatter it before the simulation so we're going to make a Voronoi fracture and a scatter node. So I just want big pieces for now so I'm going to go with something like 25 points and turn down the relaxed iterations and if you can drop a exploded view node and you can see that we have a bunch of pieces so i'm going to use the assemble node after this and just check here to pack all these into individual pieces so now i'm going to make uh, smaller bits so we want to still keep some of the bigger ones so we're going to make an attribute to split these up so i'll use a point vop and dive inside we're going to use random node on the PT num, but first drop a multiply before and promote that parameter. This is going to act as like a random seed for us to use to help customize the look later. And now make a compare node set to greater than and promote that parameter so that we have this threshold. And then if you bind export to an attribute called split, we're going to make a split node and if you set it to at split equals one and points mode now you can use this as a viewer for which pieces we're going to keep up uh, keep big that is so you can mess around with the slider to choose that and to make our other smaller ones we're going to use a for each loop and since these are packed it just naturally will go through each one so first off you want to unpack it and then we're going to just do the same setup with our Voronoi fracture and then scatter setup. And if you just add an assemble at the end, we'll be back to where we were and merge these together. You can see that we have this name attribute, which we're going to actually use later. It identifies each individual piece. Uh, one thing, because we split it and then did a new assemble, it's starting at zero and we don't want any overlapping piece numbers. So if you go back into the assemble in our pact, uh, first off, let's go up here actually and check on create meta import node. And I'm just going to name that to info. And then going into our assemble, you see this output prefix, it says piece. So here, if you just put in our detail expression, so detail referencing the info, and then grabbing the iteration, and I'm just going to put plus a thousand just to make sure we don't have any intersections with the original pieces. And now you'll see our pieces have a higher number for these smaller ones, which is going to be helpful later on. And then drop another exploded view and you can see that we have a bunch of smaller bits. There's obviously plenty of ways you could fracture objects and more detail you could add throughout as you want. So we're just going to go with this for now. All right, let's get into the actual sim. So make a null labeled in underscore geo all caps and then make a dot net. And then we're going to inside, we're going to make an RBD packed object and a rigid body solver. So wire that into the first node and wire that one out. Now, if you change the source here to first context geo, It'll read in the geo that we merged in. And let's also just add in some gravity at the end and make a ground plane and just merge that in. On the merge, you can see the effector relationship says left affects right. So just hit shift R to reverse the inputs. And if you hit play, you're going to see things fall apart all at once. This is cool, it might be what you want, um, but let's control which pieces fall apart. Houdini has a global attribute called active, 
where you can tell a simulation when a piece of geo should be affected by the sim. So we can actually use that to essentially turn pieces on as the sim goes on. So if you come back out, I'm gonna make a point vop and drop a vector to float. And we'll make this thing rely on the Y position. So I'm gonna make a compare node, set it to greater than, and then do a fit node hooked up to frames to give it animation. I'm gonna do 1001 to 1030 as my activation time span. Then looking at my Y values, you can see it goes up to about 7.4 or something. So I'm gonna put something more at around 7.5 and then have a zero at the second output to make sure that we get through all the geo. So if you hook that up to the color, you can kind of see what's happening. Uh, packed objects don't handle color well sometimes. So let's just move on and we're gonna use a solver now. So if you make a point vop inside, hooking it up to input one, and if you have the second input attached to the previous frame. Now we'll do a vector to float on the color. And if you add that, now drop an import point attributes node, setting it to second input. So that for, for looking at the frame before and grabbing the CD attribute, and you add those together. This would just act as a counter. Essentially, each frame it would just add one. So it, you know, it would just keep going. So we're gonna clamp that at two, which I'll explain in a second. So now just make a float to int and bind export this to active. You won't see any changes. So just make an unpack setting, making sure to unpack uh, the active attribute and then make a visualizer. You'll type in active here and setting it to ramped attribute. Now you can see that we have the different values of zero, one, and two. And this is to make the object active. So it just has to be above zero to do that. So why do we do two? Well, we're gonna create a custom velocity that only happens on the frame it turns on. So make an attribute create, name it V, make it a size of three and i'm going to do values of let's say six in the y and negative two in z so that it just goes up and a little bit forward when these pieces turn on now let's go back into our sim and in the packed object if you check on overwrite attribute you can see it already has active built into it so if you hit play, you'll see that we have our effect happening where the pieces at the end turn on first and then the ones at the bottom later. So this is starting to get there. Let's just add the velocity. So we're gonna go make a SOP solver and object merge to bring in our in geo node. Now, first I'm gonna do an attribute rename and change the V to vel just to avoid any confusion with the actual sim's velocity. Now make a attribute copy and check on match by attribute, setting it to name since our assemble node created that for our piece and we're gonna use vel. And also let's bring in active since we're gonna use that in a second. Now we have to tell our sim to read this when the piece becomes active. So we're gonna make a point bot and bind in the active attribute and the vel attribute. Remember we have active going up to two, but we only want it to receive our velocity when it's one, so right when it becomes active. So we're gonna use a compare, set it to equals one, and then use a two-way switcher setting vel in the first input, and then just the regular sim v in the second, and wire that out. Now if you come back up, you hit play and you can see we've got our simulation. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Project files are on the site as always and until next time. <laughs> <laughs>